What's good, folks? I want to welcome you back to a series that I started on and I kind of let fade out, man. Basically, what I do in this video is I show you different PC build guides using PC Part Picker at different budgets to try to help you out if you're in the process of looking for PC parts and what you want to do. Now, like I said, these are just guides. What I'll be doing is showing you a couple of different lists at two different budgets. I want to give a big, big shout out to the homie Dewan Lightfoot, hashtag lab every day. Man, he is a an amazing creator who is really about helping people and I really love that about him. He's really about helping people, especially those who are in the tech, wanting to get their certifications, wanting to get their education right to get a better job, a better career, or, you know, even just advance in what they're already doing. So make sure you go check out his channel. I'm going to put the links down below. He wanted me to spend about $1,000 and come up with a build based around that that would give him some really good power going forward and also have built in NICs in the motherboard that support 802.1Q VLAN. We also have a cheaper $500 build. I just wanted to throw this in because I think if you're looking to build a PC, right now is an interesting time. But before we get into that, I want to give y'all a quick tip. I don't know if you guys knew this, but YouTube has a way to kind of help y'all out, man. This has kind of blew my mind. Basically, if you hit that button on there that says subscribe, you'll get my videos coming to you. You won't have to hear it from a friend or just see it, you know, in search results or whatnot. You'll get my videos directly to you. And if you hit that bell, you'll get a notification to let you know as well. I mean, it blew my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it. So go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and look at some of these bills. First, we're starting with the $500 build. This is based around the fact that we have the new third generation of Ryzen Zen 2 PC parts that were released. So we have the 3600, the 3400, the 3200G, and the 3900X, which I will be getting in. So make sure you do hit that subscribe. See what I do with that, man. See what I do with that beast. But this one right here, the beautiful thing about Ryzen is that even if you use the older chips, you can use the older chips today on the same platform. AMD made that promise that they were going to keep the same platform for a while. So you can get a Ryzen first gen, throw it on the same motherboard that you throw a Ryzen third gen on. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go over the build. This is the $500 budget build. Now I based this around the Ryzen 5 1600 because you can get the Ryzen 2600 for not much more, just about $20 more brand new, you know, but that Ryzen 5 1600 is still a six core processor that offers you power, bang for your buck. It's really, really the six series, whether it's the 1600, the 2600, or even now the 3600 is the ultimate bang for your budget CPU series, really it is. Six cores, 12 threads, and you can overclock it, and you can get it for really, really cheap. Really cheap? Man, <laughs> you just gotta check it out. Now the reason I went with the 1600 over the 2600 is because right now, even though they're, they're not that far apart, we're using, we're just kinda, we're trying to skimp a little bit on certain parts so we could hit this magical $500 number these do have a cooler that comes with it but if you wanted to add another cooler on i picked out the arctic freezer 7 that's if you buy it used and maybe it don't come with the cooler or you want to get a little bit better cooling because you want to do some overclocking you know but you can scrape this right here and save 20 dollars on your build and bring that price to under 500. for the motherboard i actually went with the b450 motherboard because this is a pretty solid motherboard that is actually pretty cheap. You know, you could get a B350 or even A320 if you're really, really trying to scrape the bottom of that barrel and not do any overclocking or anything like this. But this right here provides you a good upgrade path to maybe one day you wanna upgrade that 1600 to a 2600 or even a 2700, you know, 
you can get that good upgrade path and be good to go. RAM, I kept it pretty simple. I want 16 gigabytes of Team Vulcan RAM. RAM has been dropping like crazy. I remember when I was buying RAM for my systems a year ago, 16 gigabytes was easily 130, 140. Now you can get it for under 70 bucks, even cheaper. So I was like, why not just go for a full 16? That way at $500, you still have a machine that can game. You still have a machine that can do some lightweight editing you still have a machine that will give you the power that you need to not feel like yo this is just a crappy budget system drive wise these inland and a data ssds to me are the way to go honestly you can get these inland 240 gigabyte ssds for under 30 bucks throw those in throw your os on there then maybe populate that with another older spinning hard drive that you have maybe a 500 gigabyte or even a one terabyte hard drive just to save your files on but definitely you want to pick up an ssd in 2019 we're not doing that booting off of anything other than the ssd in 2019 give that up plain and simple <laughs> we're not doing that graphics card to me, we've talked about it at nauseum. I still love the RX 580 for 1080p gaming, but the RX 570 is pretty much untouchable when it comes to price plus performance, especially at 1080p. This is gonna be a solid 1080p gaming machine, which a lot of people still game at. Now, case-wise, it's not the a most amazing case, but for the price, I thought this was a pretty good looking case. You got a nice mesh opening right here. You have this acrylic side panel here. I don't believe that this is tempered glass, but even still, it should look nice. You should be able to put a nice build together and be good with that. And for 40 bucks, it's not bad at all. To wrap it all up, we have a simple 550 watt 80 plus bronze Rosewell power supply. Now, another thing, you could get the EVGA B stock power supply is super cheap if you catch those deals, but this is definitely way more than enough for your system to get you up and running. So that is our $500 bill. Like I said, you could cut you could change things around and maybe go with a 2600 for probably about 20 bucks more cut off this cooler right here you know and you could work things around in here maybe go for eight gigabytes of ram instead of 16 prices do fluctuate so make sure you check the links to get the latest price now let's go to my one thousand dollar bill this is what i put together for duan um i think this is a pretty good starting point if you're going out right now looking to build a pc he's not a gamer as well so that's why i went with the card that i went with it should still give him enough power if he did want a game but for productivity i know he edits videos i know he does other things on his computer it should have enough power so to start it off i went with the ryzen 7 3600x the brand new eight core processor eight cores overclockable it really gives you a lot of power because it's multi-thread so it's eight cores 16 threads and one thing that he spoke about wanting to do on here is run vlans so as somebody who's run different vlans and virtual machines on my system having more threads allows you to dedicate certain threads to a virtual machine if you're into that stuff definitely go check out his channel and learn way more about all of that now the motherboard i went with is the Aorus X470 Gaming. Now I went with the X470 because right now those X570 boards are ridiculous. I mean, they're super expensive. Honestly, I haven't seen in the reviews and check out all the reviews and the benchmarks, haven't seen where the performance difference is that much better that you need that the new X570 chipset. So for the time being, I think you can get away with the X470. Make sure that if you don't already have a motherboard with the Ryzen chip that you can upgrade and update the BIOS, that the motherboard that you buy comes prepared right out of the box for Ryzen third generation. So, but I went with this, if, if I was near Dewan, we'd take care of him, get him straight. He wouldn't have to worry about any of that. But that's just a tip for any of y'all looking to buy. For RAM, here's another thing that he wanted. He wanted 32 gigabytes. The more RAM on your system, the better. 
32 gigabytes is so cheap compared to where it was before. You can get 32 gigabytes for prices like this. I went with something simple. These Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM chips are solid. You throw them in there and they work. I'm, I haven't had any problems with them, you know, working in any system that I've used. Now he told me he wasn't worried too much about drives because he has plenty of drives. What I would suggest still is, like I said, get one of these cheap A data drives, $30 for 240 gigabytes. Now, like I said, what I would do is for any new system, I would get one of these, make it my OS drive, install some apps to it, then port over my other drives from older systems to have those for storage. The graphics card that I went with was the MSI GTX 1660 Ti. Now, I believe the 1660 Ti is probably your best solid bet on the Nvidia side to if you play the game, if he got in the game at all, he would be good to go. You don't pay the extra RTX fees for bumping this up to a 2060. Also being that this is these are Ryzen, you need to have some kind of graphics card. We can even save more money here if he's not gonna do any gaming at all. Then you could just throw in something simple as a 1650 just to have some graphics in your machine. So that's something that you have an option to do. You know, I went with this one because I think it's a great midline in a machine like this. Don't you you may never know. Even if you don't game now, you might you know, want to turn on something and be like, oh, that's cool that I can actually get some good performance. You know, even when you're editing, if you're doing any kind of editing or anything where um, CUDA power can be used, it's a great card. It's a good, solid range card for you to start at. The case that I went with is the Fractal Design Mesh of 5C. If you've seen any case reviews, you've probably seen this case. I think this case is beautiful. It's similar to the case that I use for Polar Predator, but this one has actual glass and it's much better build. So definitely think this is a nice, clean, white. I like those white cases with the glass side panels. You got mesh on the front. You should have some good airflow. So that's definitely something to think about. And to wrap that up, I just went with an EVGA Supernova 80 plus gold certified, fully modular power supply. I think when you're stepping up to a budget like this, you wanna get something that's either semi or fully modular so you can kinda of not worry with cables that you don't need, keep them out of the way. Now you can keep it clean, especially when you have this new case with the side panels, you know, have all these extra power supply cables all over the place. So. Like I said, the first build, $500. Right here, we have a total of 501.44. There are definitely some things in there that you could work around, maybe go use and save you a penny here and there. The second build is about 1,057. And like I said, if you wanted to knock off some stuff, you could maybe go with just the 1660 instead of the 1660 Ti, save some money there. So now down below, I would like you guys to let me know what kind of builds you'd like to see me give you some guides on because we could do a lot of different things and when i started this series i really enjoyed showing people the different type of builds that they could put together so i really want to get back into that actually i'm gonna be working on my own build i think i'm going to revamp everything in my main build here shortly so let me know what you guys think down below in the comments i'm gonna get up out of here shout out to the one go check his channel out hit that like share and subscribe and never forget to holla at your boy.